Thank God for the lighthouse. Yes. Let me get this PowerPoint started. PowerPoint is very effective for me. I will glory in the cross. Reading just the first verse of our text that we opened with, Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. That's a very profound statement right there. It teaches us about our self-sacrifice, that we're crucified under the world. I want to read to you from John, the first chapter, the ninth verse, and I'm talking about the only begotten Son. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. This is an amazing story that John the Baptist had told about Christ. This is John the Beloved that recorded that testimony of John the Baptist. Now John the Baptist said that he, he that of whom he spake was before me. As a matter of fact, John the Baptist was born before Christ. But he said, Christ was before me. That didn't mean he was born before him. That was mean he was existing real in his power before John was ever born. That's because John the Baptist had recognized who Jesus was. He knew he was the Son of God. He told his disciples that were following him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. You know, it must have been something to be John the Baptist and be able to talk about how good God was going to be, how Jesus was coming to this world and how did he come to save people. And he would baptize people, not in the name of the Holy Ghost, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but he'd baptize them under the baptism of John because he had not had that relationship with God yet that Jesus had. But John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost from his birth, Amen. from his womb, Amen. his mother's womb. So he, he just did not baptize to the baptism of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost because that was going to be Jesus' baptism. And he was going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. That fire is that desire to serve God with all your heart. Yeah. To shake loose of this world. And to come together in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ 
in the power of the Spirit and knowing the Word of God was going to carry you. Carry you through all your troubles and all your heartaches. Make a difference in your life. He came to his own, but his own received him not. Now you would have thought that all the people that were around when John the Baptist was born would recognize that Jesus was the Son of God. And the people that were around when Jesus was born, knowing that he was born of that really wonderful birth where the angels had sang about him in the heavens and said, there's born in Bethlehem a child born and laying in a manger. And how about them wise men that came and gave good gifts unto Christ of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It was so significant to the life of Christ. But you know, all the people that had a human knowledge about Christ did not necessarily serve Christ. They didn't serve God. They just followed a form of godliness, but denied the power thereof. Mm -hmm. So you see, we've got to do more than talk about it, live around it. We've got to receive him. He said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I wonder sometimes, where were those ten lepers that Christ had healed? Only one turned back to even glorify his name. And where was the blind men that God had used Jesus to heal? And where was that man that had laid by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years when Jesus was hanging on the cross and dying for their sins? You see, men couldn't follow the Lord until they had a real relationship with Him. They didn't recognize Him as Lord. Not until He came out of the grave did they, they really know Him as Lord. Because when He suffered and died for our sins, that great veil that was between God and man was rent in twain, and access was made. But you know what really made the difference? Was on the morning that he come out of the ground. Because without that life that come alive in that tomb, he couldn't guarantee us that we'd have that life everlasting. But he guaranteed it when he came out of the ground. And he raised, rose up many of the old saints from the ground. And they witnessed of him. And you know, when the day of Pentecost happened, there was a lot of people around Jerusalem at that time. And it was noised abroad. They could tell about the wondrous love of Christ. They could tell about the miracles God had done through Him. And they could spread the word because of the Holy Ghost power. Here comes Peter and John at the gate called Beautiful at the third hour of the day to pray and a man lay in there lame was that same power that Jesus has used to heal the sick raise the dead make people that were lame walk again was it going to be real well of course it was because Peter and John was there and Peter spoke to him and said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And that man went leaping and walking and praising God through the temple. Such as I have. We can't help the world if we don't have it, can we? We've got to have a relationship and glory in the cross that Jesus died for us and purchased our way and purchased and opened up the gate so we could call on the name of the Lord. And in Romans 10 and 13, we find it where it says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
And that's what we got to do, friends. We got the glory in that cross and call on his name. A lot of times people get in trouble with God and they can't live right because they don't call on the name of the Lord. He'll deliver us if we'll call on his name. Amen. This is the end of our second section. I think I'll play this one song I got, Brother Johnny. And uh, then I'll preach that third section and you can sing afterward if you don't mind. I have a special song, I think.